Welcome back to Highfield Road. And just about to come into shot is a class 59, which is hauling a rake of Backman Mark 1 coaches. And that brings us on to today's subject. And that is how would you go about taking the Batman Mark 1 coach apart if you wanted to go and put passengers in, which I have done, and also install lighting, which I've not yet done. So I hope you find this video useful. Let's crack straight on with it. So let's just quickly show you what tools you're going to need for this job, or the tools that I have been using. And that is a tool zone mini drill set. The desired size, which I've been using, is a 0.3. That goes into my little drill, a little hand drill. A Phillips or a crosshead screwdriver. And a craft knife. Right, let's grab the coach of choice and let's take it apart. So in front of you we have the uh, Mark 1 restaurant car from Batman. So first of all, the things we want to do is quickly flip the coach over in the cradle. Now what you'll see on the back of this Batman coach is that the bogeys have got a screw point there and a screw point there. So first of all, what you want to do is get your crosshead screwdriver or flips and just quickly whip the bogeys off. So let's just quickly do that now. You have to excuse the hands, of course. And the bogeys should just pop off nice and easy. Sorry about the arm. I'll try and do it left-handed so my arm's not getting in the way. I don't think I can. Oh, practice makes perfect and all that. Let's keep going. All right. Oh, no, it's not quite there yet. A couple more turns. So there, away go the bogeys. Now what you want to do is just put them to one side with the little screws for now. Okay. Next, if you have a look down onto the actual chassis of the body, you'll see there's a centralized screw there. And let's just zoom in a little bit. So you've got a centralized screw there. And if I just pop the cradle over a little bit and move these out of the way, now just be careful that the little springs don't go shooting off, all right? You'll see that it exposes another little screw on that side. And again, if I take this one off, give it a little twist and it'll come away you'll see on the on the left hand side of the picture there's another screw point there. Next is you want to whip away those three little screws. Apologies for the background noise, I'm right next to a, a main road. Just tend to get noisy unfortunately. Come back to that one in a minute, he's been a bit of a bugger. Just zoom back out for you a sec. Oh, out, not in. And I can't, apologies for the, the camera. It is a, a little bit dark as well. If I have the main light on it, it just makes everything too bright. So, the middle one next, if he's going to come out of this one. Sometimes. I hope he doesn't want to come out, so let's just get another one in a minute. Believe it or not, sometimes you need a, a, a nice selection of screws screwdrivers to get these out there you go well he's not coming out maybe he's loose and just in the thread oh uh, yeah so the thread's worn on that one all right so now you've well let's just say for argument's sake that you've taken those three screws out okay the three screw points i'll show you what else you need to do next this is where your little craft knife will come into it so on the mark one coaches on each end of the coach they've got um i'm just going to zoom in and then bring the coach up a little bit They've got pipe work, so you've got it here and here. Now, what I use a little craft knife for is just to pull them away. So what I'll do, I'll get my knife underneath the pipe and they should come away like that. Some of them can be a little bit tougher than others, but you have to remove these to be able to get the coach part. So let's just do one more. Get it in there, be very gentle. And they should pop away like that. So then on this particular coach, there's two on that end. I think there's two on this end as well. Yeah. All right, pop that one out, spin him around. And then I will pop that one out as well. Okay. So that's the little pipe work out of each end of the coach. Next, uh, what I'll do, just zoom back out again. 
this is where your little hand drill comes into play now. Now, if I get my other phone for a bit of light, a second. Where, where these little pipes go in on the coach, there's little tiny holes. Okay, so I'll try and show you if I can. So you'll see that there, there's a little hole and it's the same on each side. So basically it's, it's the point where the pipes go into the actual plastic of the coach itself and to the side of the vestibule. Um, the reason I use this drill now is, is just to make those holes just a little bit bigger. So when it comes to putting the pipe work back in later when you're reassembling the body, they go in a lot, a lot better and you're not bending all the pipe work because I've tried doing it with the original holes and yeah, I was having a bit of a mare of it. So you get yourself a 0.3 drill bit. That's the perfect size. It's not too much, but it's enough to get the pipes back in. So we've now taken the two bogies off. We've removed the three screws. Let's say we have anyway, that one's loose. Oh, there we go. He's out now. So yes, we have moved the three screws. You've also taken um, the pipework out of each end of the coach and just tuck them around the sides. Next now is removing the actual body from the chassis. So it's quite simple. If you literally get your hands underneath, it should just pull away like that. And you find that the weight comes away with it. Something I just wanna very quickly mention. When you go about putting the body back together with the coach, make sure that this weight is in the right way. Now on the actual chassis of the coach itself, there's three little, I say they're nipples, and they need to line up perfectly with the plate. Because if you don't get them perfect, you'll get bows in the chassis and the bogies will come off going around corners, basically, and it just looks awful. <laughs> Let's just move back to one side. So if you're going to be keeping these coaches for the long haul and you're not too worried about what you do with them, my advice would be to get some glue or some black tack Probably glue's better because black tack can be layered and it might make it seesaw a bit. But get a bit of glue, put it around the framework there on the inside, put the magnet on top. The glue I use is uh, Gorilla Gel, so the Gorilla Glue and Gel format. I think it's got a green lid, I think it is. Um, and then, yeah, just get some pegs and just hold that to set. And they ain't ever got to worry about that plate causing you problems later on down the road. So that's the chassis anyway so you can put that to one side next you've got the coach in the insert and these are really easy to take apart literally put your fingers like that either side and then just uh, just tease it out it's, it's harder when you're trying to look into the camera of course there you go so there you go, there's the interior away from the coach body itself. Don't do what I did and throw your coach bodies around because uh, you end up damaging them. So that's not good practice. Um, but yeah, that's how you go around uh, getting the body off itself. And as you can see, I fitted some little passengers in already, some little Batman passengers. Now, the reason I want to take this particular coach apart is I was being a bit of a fussy bugger. You can probably see that chap there in his grey suit when reading his newspaper well i didn't notice until i put the seat put it all back together but look he's sitting a bit wonky he looks like he's hanging off the edge of the chair so i thought right what i'll do let's take the coach apart and while i'm doing it i'll show you how to do it and let's just uh, quickly fix him back in place now when i was doing all the passengers and all the coaches there was a couple of passengers because of the tight space between the tables and the chairs, I literally just put in with no glue. So I'm hoping that this is gonna be one of them. So let's have a look. There we go. So that was one of them, no glue. So that's why he's moved. So let's uh, just go into my drawer of goodies a moment. And uh, let's just get that grid of gel I was showing you or I mentioned. 
which wasn't at the tools you would need at the beginning. So apologies about that. <laughs> but technically you shouldn't need this. <laughs> um, just gonna unwind that now and just put a little blob on its bottom. If it wants to come out. Oh, steady, that was lucky. Oh, that can I super glue my fingers in a minute. Get that away. Don't want to glue my fingers together, do I? That's not very clever. That's why you should always make sure the body and everything else is away. Because if you have an accident like I just did, and drop glue everywhere, it doesn't go for the body. So let's put this little passenger in. Put the lid on that glue a moment so it doesn't spill everywhere. Though, unfortunately, that um, Gorilla Gel I just showed you, I've had it in the sun all afternoon. So that's why it's coming out like it did and dripped everywhere. It shouldn't do that. It's more of a gel type glue. So it should come out a bit more thicker than that normally. So let's see if I can get this passenger in, shall we? These can be a bit fiddly, to be honest, but it might be better just doing it like that. You have to excuse the hand. Let's try and put them in that way, shall we? There we go. Slide them across. And there we go. Jobs are good in. So that little passenger is now back in. So I'm just going to cut off for a minute, let them to set, and then we'll go about reassembling the body from the coach. Right, so now the uh, passenger has found his seat for life, we can, go around, uh, we can now go about putting the actual interior of the coach back inside the coach body itself. So make sure, obviously, before I crack on, actually, the insert is the right way around for the coach, and make sure like the doors level up with the doors, for example, and the toilets level up with the toilets. All right. So um, what we'll do, let's just put them together. Probably better putting them upside down, to be perfectly honest. It's just, just to tease it apart. So you're aiming for the side of the coach is to go over the plastic of the insert. Like so. All right, so you'll see that there's a, a lip here and now look. Flip them back over. You'll see that's all in place. Lovely jubbly. Okay. So the next bit is to go about putting the actual interior and the coach body back onto the chassis itself. Now this is where it can be a little bit fiddly and you've got to make sure all your little screw points from the three screws you took out previously are all in line. Okay. So let's crack onto that now. Right, so before we go about putting the coach body back on the actual chassis itself, there's just a couple of little things I want to show to you. Um, first of all, though, let's just reiterate this actual weight which is in the coach. Make sure it's in the right way. Again, that you can see the mouldings in all three holes, because otherwise, if you've got it around the wrong way, it will cause like a seesaw effect in the body, and it will balance on the centre one, and it can cause a derailment issues with the bogies. And it can also cause the framework to look all warped and horrible. Um, if I just quickly bring the coach to the side as well on the Mark 1, you'll see there is a little lip there. Now that little lip needs to sit when you're putting the body back down over the top of that mould in there, that little lip on the mould in, okay? And then that helps it all just clip in back to place. Just um, as well, make sure that before you put the body back down onto the chassis that all these pipes are out of the way because you don't want to break them or snap them off when you're putting the body back down. So just be mindful of that. The other thing as well is, if you look at that now as it is, let me just zoom in a bit, that would be wrong if I put that body back onto the chassis. So you've got the screw hole there, which goes down to that screw hole there. And it's the same on the other side, that one there that one there if like i said if i put that back down now that would be wrong and it will be out of sync because that screw hole there is not in line with that central screw hole there so if i flip them around now and show you that is all lovely jubbly and in line so that one matches that one that one matches that one and that one matches that one so let's move on to the next bit now of actually putting the body onto the chassis so now all the pipe work is connected at the end, 
it's time to use your three little screws we had, which we took out on step two of the video, to put them back in. Now, when I was taking this apart, you may remember that the central screw on the chassis was a bit um, problematic. So I will always say to you, try and do the central screw first and then do the ends after. But when I go and do this now, it may give me a problem, but we'll see. So just remembering that if, like mine at the moment, your weight is still loose, you really don't wanna try and move it because it can cause you problems. So I'm just trying to do it on an angle. Let's see if that'll take. Oh, I think that is actually working. So you can tight, tighten him right up until there you go, that's nice and tight, so that's one. Let's get the next screw. Make sure he's in line, which he is. Nice and tight. And then last but not least, we do the one on the left hand side. Basically what that does, that brings the insert inside the coach all in line with the windows. Yeah, that centre one is a bit, must have over tightened them, but what you need to do then is obviously look down the coach and just make sure none of the tables are out of line. So they should be all be in level, sorry, I'll start again. Just have a quick look down the coach and just make sure that the tables are in line with the windows. Because if any of those three screw points are not correct or the weight, is getting in the way, you'll notice that the tables push up and none of it's in line or it's a bit of a wave effect. And the other giveaway as well is if you look around along the frame of the chassis underneath the coach, that can also be bent as well. So just a couple of little pointers there to look out for to make sure that when you're screwing them all back together that you've not got any like wavy effect in the chassis or on the interior, on the tables, etc. So that is almost there now we just gotta reattach the um, couplings and the wheel sets so we'll do that now so now you'll see that i'm zoomed in and uh, i'm gonna now try and put the couplings back on so you've got your little spring down here and you just need to put it in the hole on the uh, plastic coupling so i'll do that it might actually be easier to be fair to literally just take the whole spring off put it on from the other end and then reattach to the actual chassis but we'll give this a shot just for a minute and see how this goes overstretch it a bit hopefully that's now in there you go let's now you can see the spring is attached to the coupling mechanism so just slightly turn it like that and it will sit back in its recess and then put it central and that shouldn't come out. Then what you want to do obviously is get one of the bogies and the screw which you discarded earlier on or put in a safe place. Put it over the top. Get your screwdriver which is <laughs> stuck to my cable, my camera. So excuse the shaking, so apologies about that. Okay, so now we can bring in the screw. Make sure that's straight, because you don't want to cross thread the plastic. So that one's in, so that's one. And then we'll repeat this process on the second one as well. So if I can find the little coupling, hopefully that will go on straight away like the other one did. Let's uh, overstretch it in the hole. There we go, look. I believe me, it always doesn't go as easy as that. Okay, so he's in. Right, let me uh, just gonna fiddle that spring a minute, not quite happy with it. There we go, so he's sitting nice and flush as he should do. Let's get the other bogey in and screw. Uh, 
And then we are more or more or less job done. Again, just make sure those screws are straight so you don't do any cross threading. You can do, you can do them up reasonably tight. And if you get any problems with running, so like the coaches are going around your corners and the bogeys are lifting off or derailing, just literally loosen these off half a turn until you get you know, the desired effect on your layout and uh, it's not derailing anymore. But yeah, so that is the coach now back together. Let's just zoom out so you can actually see what I'm talking about. There's our restaurant car, all put back together. I hope you will find this video helpful in taking your Mark 1 coaches apart. Don't forget to um, click the subscribe button and the like button and all that good stuff below. It is appreciated. And uh, I'll just take a quick moment now, obviously, just to say welcome to all my new subscribers. Thanks for following Mimi. Uh, Mimi? Mimi? Can't get my words out. Thanks for following me on my journey. And uh, the next video you'll get from this channel, Highfield Roads on Dugma Junction, it gets bloody confusing, uh, will be a running session on Highfield Road. So I'll look to get that out to you next week. But for now, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed this how-to on the Mark 1s. And we'll see you soon, guys. Take care.